Good morning, church family. I am so glad that everybody was able to come and worship with us this morning. I want to welcome our guests online. I'm so glad that you took the opportunity to come and worship with us this morning. Have a couple announcements and then we'll continue with our worship. And it has to do with the rest of the month. So if you want to pull your phone out, look at a calendar with me, that would be awesome. So this Wednesday, the 23rd, we will have no Wednesday night services. And then that next Sunday, the 27th, we will only have service at 1030. There will be no child care, no life groups. And then that next Wednesday, the 30th, there will be no Wednesday night service again. Okay? Then, just wanted to give our church a little reminder of what we're doing today after church. We're having a delivering gift opportunity for... Um, some of our families in the community. What we did is we got some gifts together and we're delivering those today at three. So if you could be praying for any gospel conversations that might come about during that process. And then last but definitely not least, we're having basketball and cheer camps this year and I need some coaches. So if you're interested in coaching for our basketball camp or our cheerleading camp, please just contact the church and you'll have the opportunity to get that information. Now, we're having an opportunity to read some scripture this morning. We have a student, Nicholas. He's going to read the last part of the Christmas story. Here you go, Nicholas. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning all that had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen that were just as they had been told. Thank you, Nicholas. All right, pray with me, church. King Jesus, thank you so much for this morning. God, thank you for the ability to come and worship you freely today um, at church. God, I pray for D Brother Derek as he preaches this morning. God, I just pray for this evening when we go deliver these gifts to our community. God, let us be the light in this dark world. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. We're so glad you're here. Let's go ahead and stand up. And we want to say Merry Christmas. Let's lift high our voices for the name of Jesus Christ by singing angels from the realms of glory. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who say creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come! 
Thank you so much for your great singing. Uh, you can go ahead and be seated, but this morning we have the terrific opportunity to worship through baptism. So please give your attention to the baptism, baptistry. Good morning, church. We're coming this morning to celebrate uh, the obedience in people's life of coming to know Jesus Christ. And first, we have Mr. Brandon Beam. So, Brandon, if you'd come. We'll give a second for all friends and family. Mr. Brandon Beam, if you would stand. We know it's a collective effort, discipleship and pouring into young ones. So we ask the church as a whole, if you would stand in celebration of Brandon being baptized. 
Mr. Brandon, is it your public profession that Jesus Christ is Lord? Well, based off your public profession, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Next, we have Mr. Blaine McGraw. I've had the privilege of getting to have an ongoing dialogue with Mr. McGraw the past couple of weeks, get to hang out together, and then we had a cornhole tournament, and then I had the pleasure of getting to hear that he was saved not too long ago. So, church family, I already see you already stand. Based off your public profession, Mr. McGraw, is it your testimony that Jesus Christ is Lord? Yes, sir. Based off your public profession, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let me pray for us. God, we thank you for another Sunday. I thank you we get to come in a room and we get to worship you with our ears, with our voices, with our hearts. God, we thank you we get to worship and baptism. God, we thank you that you save people. We get to participate in that. We get to witness them going from enemies to friends of God. Now, God, we praise you for that. God, and I, we praise you for this morning, just another opportunity to make much of King Jesus. So please do that in our hearts this morning. In Christ's name I pray this. Amen. silence with glory in the highest the hope of all creation resting in his mother's arms a song on the horizon ringing through the heavens the long awaited Savior to set the captives free. Come to set the captives free. Come set us free. Come on, church, singing. Hope has a name. Hope has a name. Started in a manger, ended in an empty grave.
so thankful for that song and I'm so thankful that hope has a name and his name is Jesus for the past few months and for the past week and for this morning the Lord has been speaking to me and I want to share that with you right now we're in a season of celebrating the birth of our Savior of Jesus Christ and I'm so thankful for that amen but also there's a lot of talk about this new year that we're about to embark upon, 2021. Now, you, if you agree, you can nod your head. This past year, we've talked a lot about, has not been the, the greatest year I've ever lived, right? And I've heard a lot of people talking about how when we come to this new year, we're starting a new path. We're starting fresh. And a lot of people are praying that this new year is so much better than this past one. And I am too. I'm telling you, I am. But there's two things that have been on my heart. And that is one, that no matter what has happened this year, next year, 10 years ago, 10 years in the future, God is still God. He is never changing. And He is our Father forever. And two, and, and, and I, this is important, I want you to listen. Two is that going into this new year, whatever may happen, there will still be people who are walking in darkness, who do not know the name of Jesus Christ. And that breaks my heart. And there's someone here today, there's someone who walked through those doors in darkness. And if that's you, I want to tell you the beautiful thing about Jesus is you don't have to stay there. You don't have to keep living there. Because Jesus says in John chapter 8, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Amen. I'm so thankful I serve Jesus Christ because of that. Now, as we sing this last song, Kristen's going to lead us. And I want you to listen to the words that she's about to sing. In the darkness, we were waiting without hope, without light. I'm asking you, open your heart this morning.
Well, you can take your Bible and open with me to Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6. As you're turning there, I do want to let you know many have been asking, many of you have been praying for me and my family and finding a place to lodge. And I do want to let you know we have found a rental home that we're going to be in starting in January. And so thank you for praying for us. We do have a place. uh, And so we don't have to be stressed about that. Uh, God has provided and answered your prayer. And so thank you, church, uh, for that. Romans chapter 6 is where we're going to be today. Uh, gifts are important to all of us. Uh, we appreciate receiving gifts. And the best gifts are those that you receive where if, even if you tried, you could not pay it back. Uh, I think that's why kids love presents so much. One, they like just getting stuff. But two, there is no concept of, you know what, I ought to give something in return. All right? Nor could they possibly come up with a gift that would match the cost of the gifts they're receiving or the, the, the importance of what they're receiving to themselves. In the Bible, we find the Magi Uh, after a year or two coming to see the Lord Jesus in his home, and uh, they bring three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, the Bible does not tell us 
whether Joseph and Mary already had some of those gifts, but it does imply that they were starting off, they were not extremely wealthy. It is possible they had never seen gold, frankincense, or myrrh. It's also likely that they didn't own any gold, frankincense, or myrrh. So here are the wise men coming to worship the baby Jesus, coming to worship him, and out of that adoration for him, they bring gifts that Joseph and Mary have no way of repaying beyond what their ability is. The greatest gifts are like that. That's why I think sometimes we as adults miss out on the blessing of gifts because we get a gift and yet we can give a gift of the same value in return many times. But the greatest gifts, you can't do that. And God has given us one great gift. And it is the free gift of God. It is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Today we address that gift. The title of the message is what I just said, one great gift. And the greatest gifts are not temporary. I don't know about you, but uh, some people are so excited about what they're going to get over the next week, and yet in two or three years it's going to be outdated. Some of you are so excited, you're going to get the the top-of-the-line newest model iPhone. And it's just not going to be very valuable in a few years. Some of you, 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago now, wanted that top-of-the-line typewriter. (laughs) And now you can't sell it and get any money for it. Why? It's just become outdated with technology. Other gifts are so expensive on the front end, but they lose their value right away. And over time, there's rust, and it breaks, or it's affected, it's deteriorating. It doesn't hold its value. The great gift holds its value. It never goes down in value. The greatest gifts are eternal gifts. Gifts that cannot be repaid, gifts that last forever. They can't wear out. They don't lose their shine. They don't collect dust because they're eternal gifts. Salvation from God is an eternal gift. This is why the martyred missionary, Jim Elliott, that was a missionary to Ecuador, said this, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Because salvation, the free gift of salvation, the free gift of eternal life, you cannot lose. It is a never-ending gift. Now, if you found your way to Romans chapter 6, please join me in standing for the reading of God's Word. I'm I'm going to read verses 22 and 23, and the emphasis of the message today is on verse 23. And I'm I'm willing to say you've probably never heard a Christmas message from Romans 6, 23, but you're about to, okay? You're about to. Romans 6, let's begin in verse 22. But now, having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit resulting in salvation, the sanctification, excuse me, and the entire outcome, eternal life. Now check this out. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. What I just read to you is God's word, it is truth. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the authority of your word, your word that is without error, that is all powerful. And you tell us it's profitable to us for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training us in righteousness. So we ask that you would take your word today, and specifically Romans chapter 6, verse 23, and teach us, O Lord, and speak into our hearts and lives, and mold us and shape us, I pray for any that don't know you as Lord and Savior, that you would save their souls today. And I pray for the saved that we would treasure the great gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. 
God bless you. You may be seated. So first I want you to see what kind of gift is it? What kind of gift? Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, You might say, well, every gift is free. Well, not necessarily. Today, oftentimes, you can give a donation to a cause for $50, and they will give you a book for $4 in return. For giving, you actually get a gift. And so it's not really free. You can't get the gift unless you give to the cause. Are you all with me? If you are, say amen. Not every gift is free, but the gift of eternal life is. It is a free gift. Now, back in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The glory of God is God's standard of perfection. You fall short of it, I fall short of it. Here's his standard, here we are. We're not even close. And we fall short. Therefore, you and I and every person on planet earth needs the free gift that God offers. The free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus, the Lord. So everyone I'm talking to today is in need of the gift. You might say, I've already received it. Then you have it. But the point is, everyone in this world, everyone walking planet earth, there's not one person that doesn't need the free gift of God. There was a pastor named Michael, and when he was in seminary, he took a course on class, a clinical pastoral education. And one of his assignments was, is he had to be a, connected with a hospital, and so if there was an emergency at the hospital, he would be called in as the chaplain to minister to a family in need as part of his pastoral class. There was this terrible car wreck. A 16-year-old girl was driving, and she backed into a pole. The pole fell on the automobile, and the 12-year-old girl in the automobile arrived at the hospital brain dead. And when this seminary student that was serving as a chaplain, Michael, got to the hospital, he ministered to this family of this 12-year-old. And he was there when they made the devastating and, and hard and difficult decision to pull the plug, so to speak, that their daughter was indeed dead. He consoled them, he prayed with them, he encouraged them, he ministered to them through this time of grief. He went home late that night. The next morning, he went back to the hospital to visit with the 16-year-old girl that was driving the automobile. She was devastated, as you can imagine. But what she kept saying is this, and I want to read it to you. I'm going to be like a daughter to her parents. I'm going to go over to their house every day and babysit for them. I'm going to wash their dishes every night for them. I'm going to mow their grass every week for them. And Michael gradually helped her realize the truth that no matter what she did, she could never replace their daughter. She could never do enough to make up for their loss. All she could do was ask for their forgiveness and hope the parents would grant her that forgiveness. The parents did just that. Amazingly, they forgave the girl. She was set free from trying to earn anything from them because she couldn't earn anything from them regarding the daughter that had been lost. She couldn't make up for it. It was too high of a cost. She couldn't bring her friend back. But she learned that day that she had done wrong and therefore she needed forgiveness. There was nothing she could do to earn that forgiveness. Well, that is a picture of what you and I have done to God. You have sinned and I have sinned and there's no amount of good works that's going to make up for it. 
We don't take gifts to families this afternoon trying to earn God's love. We don't do it trying to earn God's favor. We don't make a batch of cookies and take it to our neighbors trying to earn righteousness. We have sinned. We have fallen short of the glory of God, and there's no amount of good works that can make up for it. The only way you receive the free gift is to ask God and beg God to forgive you of your wretched sin. That's it. That is the only way to be made right with God. It's not through doing stuff. It's through surrendering and receiving Him. Eternal life is a free gift. You cannot earn it. If you had to earn it by your works, it wouldn't be free. Notice in Romans 6.23, it begins with the wages of sin is death. The cost of your sin leaves you in a spiritual state of death, and it leads you to where one day you will physically shut down. You will physically breathe your last, and your body will shut down. Why? Because sin entered the world through Adam and Eve, and now we continue that through our sin nature and our willingness to sin in our life. And therefore, that's why Jesus had to come. That's why he had to be born in Bethlehem. That's why he had to live a sinless life. That's why he had to go to the cross and die, not just bleed, not just suffer, but die, because you and I are no good. We're not. You say, well, pastor, you don't know me. I don't have to know you. I know the, what the book says. The wages of sin is death, and you have sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. That's the verses I've already shared with you. And so how are you going to make right what you've already messed up? You can't do it. Jesus did it for you. It's a gift that you receive. It's a free gift. You can't earn it. There's a popular military movie, and at the end of it, one of the men stays back to help one of his fellow soldiers, and he gets wounded doing so, and as he's laying there talking to the other soldier at the very end, he says, earn this. Now, that has made some military people very upset because from what I've been, I've been told is no one on the battlefield would ever say that to another soldier. He would say, you don't have to do anything for this. I willingly laid down my life to save yours. I willingly fought that you would live on. So you don't owe me anything. But that's not how the movie went. The movie said, earn this. That is a tragic, tragic message. Because when Jesus was on the cross and he's bleeding for you and for me, he didn't say, earn this. He laid down his life willingly. Jesus chose the nails. Look with me in John chapter 10. It'll be on the screen for you. John chapter 10, verse 17 and following, Jesus said, for this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it again. Speaking of the resurrection, verse 18 then says, No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. Jesus is not on the cross. He didn't die on the cross saying, earn this. He died on the cross saying, you never can. But I love you in spite of your sinfulness. And I will pay the price for you to be reconciled with my Father. What a message of love. And now all who repent of their sin and trust in that Jesus who died on that cross receive the free gift of eternal life. What a gift it is. It is one great gift. See, Romans chapter 6, verse 23 emphasizes both earning and giving. But it's not the earning you and I would like to think of. In Romans 6, 23, we find that the wages of sin is death. That's what you and I have earned. <laughs> so many people are trying to earn their way to God. You can't earn your way to God. That's the problem. And that's why God came to us. 
R.H. Mounts wrote, their severance check is death, eternal separation from God. Your sin earned you a severance check. You know what hell really is? It is separation from God's grace for the rest of eternity. If you're here under the sound of my voice or you're watching from home and you know not the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then please realize this. One day is going to come and you're going to be eternally separated from God. And you say, well, I don't believe in God. Well, you will. You will. And it's not a game and it's not a joke. The wages of your sin is death. That's which you've earned. But second, what God gives, the free gift of God, is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You've earned separation from God, but God gives you eternal life with him if you'll just place your trust in him. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 confirms that salvation is a gift when it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. If you're here and you're hearing this message and you say, I am a child of the living God, then you're a child of the living God because of the free gift you've been given. You're a child of the living God, not because of your own works, not because you've earned anything, not because you're better than anybody else, but because you're a wretched sinner and he's shown grace to you. You have repented of your sin and placed your faith in him. That is it. I want you to think about this for a moment. Grasp this. If you earn something, it's not free. A student earns a scholarship. And therefore, college doesn't cost as much, right? You can say, well, I have free college. No, you had to earn it. You had to get the scholarship. You had to work for it. You didn't get it for free. Someone gets a most valuable player award. Well, what an award, man. It was free to me. No, it wasn't. You had to earn it. You weren't most valuable by simply showing up. You had to do something to earn that. The raise you get in the workplace, the financial raise you receive, you had to earn it. But when it comes to God, you can't earn it. It's free and it's a gift. All you can do is receive it and say, Thank you, Jesus. Salvation is free to you. But it is a gift of great value. Karen Morod wrote the following in the 1990s. So when I, when I mention these prices, remember it's the 1990s. But I was, she said, I was in a store shopping for a sweater and the cost needed to be minimal. So I went to the clearance rack to start looking. As I flipped through the sweaters, one caught my eye. It was the right color and right size. And best of all, the price tag was marked at $8. Without much more thought, I made my purchase. At home, I slipped on the sweater. Its texture was like silk. I had made my purchase so quickly that I hadn't noticed how smooth and elegant the sweater was. Then I saw the original price, $124. I gasped. I had never owned a sweater of that value. I had come home with what I thought was a cheap buy but the original price was quite high. I had been oblivious to its value. Just as with my sweater, I, I've often treated the power of Jesus' blood like a cheap purchase. His grace, though free to me, carried a high price tag, the life of his very own son. The gift of eternal life is free to you, and it's free to me, but the value of the gift is priceless. And it costs the father his own son. So here's what we've done, church. We've addressed what kind of gift it is. It is the free kind. And when I say free, I mean completely free. 
Now, number two, how long does one have the gift? Romans 6.23 says the free gift of God is eternal life. Now, most people use Romans 6.23, myself included. I quote it often when speaking of the lost and referencing the lost, that the wage of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I use it as an evangelistic verse. But you need to realize in Romans chapter 6, Paul is writing to the church in Rome. He's writing to a, a group of believers that gather together to worship the Lord. They know the Lord, and he's letting them know that the wages of sin was, was death and it was leading them to an eternity separated from God, but they have received the free gift of eternal life. That's why I read verse 22 just a few moments ago because it leads into verse 23 talking about the gift of eternal life and your sanctification. He's talking to believers in the context. We as Christians need to cherish verse 23 of Romans 6. We need to be reminded this season as we're opening presents that the great gift is given from God. And it is in His Son, but it's what His Son has provided for us. It is eternal life. It is a free gift. But how long do we have it? Great question. We have it for eternity. Now let's just think about this for a moment. Being recipients of any gift, we ought to be grateful. Amen? Being recipients of a free gift, that'll make a man ecstatic. I mean, give me something free, I get excited. Being recipients of an eternal gift will lead you just flat out overwhelmed. But then, to receive a free gift that happens to also be eternal, that's just flat out beyond words. It's beyond comprehension. It's something that is overwhelming And there's no words to comprise it. Free gifts are great. Eternal gifts are great. But a free eternal gift is beyond great. R.J. Morgan wrote this, God responded to the greatest need, our sins, by giving the greatest person, Jesus Christ, making the greatest sacrifice his death so that he could give us the greatest gift, eternal life. And then he says this, thanks be to God for his what? Indescribable gift. What I'm talking about today is indescribable. It's so good. And there's never a gift you're going to be able to give to anyone else that comes close to this gift that God offers to us. The gift of eternal life is just flat out wonderful. And it's not just a gift you experience once you get to heaven. It's a gift you experience from the day of your conversion. If you are here today, you're listening under the sound of my voice, you are born again. If that's you, if you have been saved, that's you, then you are already enjoying the gift of eternal life. It is to be something that is treasured and adored and lived out here on this earth. If you've received the Holy Spirit, then he's in your life correcting you teaching you, comforting you, leading you. And you'll be able to enjoy this gift while you're bound to the body, the flesh, but you'll also enjoy this gift forever and ever and ever as you spend eternity in the presence of God the Father. What a gift! What a gift. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, a gift that never ends. So we've talked about what kind of gift it is. It's the free kind. We've talked about how long does one have the gift for eternity. Now look, let's be honest. This verse is not complicated. You could have read it before you come in and you'd understand the basic principles of it. But are you cherishing the truths found in it? And do you realize what the opposite of the verse is teaching? There are people today that say they love Jesus, but I can lose my salvation. I want you to think for a moment about being saved and then losing it and needing to get saved again. And if this verse would make sense with that. If the free gift of God is eternal life and you had 
life with God temporarily until you sin too much, then I'm sorry you never had the gift of eternal life because it tells us how long you have it. We read over eternal life and think it doesn't matter, yet there's segments of Christianity that don't get this basic verse. If you say, well, I was once saved and lost and I got saved again, not according to this verse. Not according to this verse. According to this verse, you're wrong. You've been deceived, if that's your testimony. Because when you receive the free gift of God in Christ Jesus, you receive it for all eternity. Now you say, well, man, I've sinned a lot since then. Well, that's the whole thing. It's a gift you receive. It's not based upon you. You needed it because you sinned, and you only keep it because God keeps you, not because you keep him. You would lose it every single day of your life if it was up to you. I would lose it every day of my life if it was up to me, but God doesn't let me go. He saved me. He bought me. I'm his. And I've received the free gift of eternal life. It's not based upon me keeping that salvation, just like it's not based upon me earning it to begin with. It's a free gift. Now, number three, who made the gift possible? Romans 6.23 says, the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The gift is only possible because the baby in the manger lived a sinless life as God the Son met the standards of God the Father to be the ultimate lamb, the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. And he went through with it. He chose the nails and he went to the cross and he bled and he died. And right before he breathed his last, he said, it is finished because he came and he accomplished the reason for his first coming. He paid the price for sin so that we could receive this free gift. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. The grave could not contain him. And he lived 40 days and then ascended to the right hand of the Father where he is today. He made this gift possible. It is not because of anything good in us. It's because of what's good in him. He made it possible. Now, Is this gift enjoyed by everyone? No, it's available to all, but it's not automatic. See, no one can come to God their own way. They have to come to God his way. And Jesus himself said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so the only way to the Father is through Jesus the Son. And so when you're talking to someone, they say, look, I've got, I've got this deal made between me and God. We're good with each other. Well, that deal better be that they've repented of their sin and placed their faith in Jesus because the only way to the Father is through the Son. There is no other way. You and I don't have the authority or the right to come up with any old way we want. There's only one way to come to God, and it's through the Son. It's God's way. The free gift, you don't receive it by obeying a set of rules. You don't receive it by trying to be a good person. You don't receive it until you turn from your sin and trust in Jesus. So let me ask you a very simple question. Have you acknowledged your own sin? Have you come before King Jesus and confessed him as your Lord, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Because the Bible says if you'll confess him as Lord, if you'll turn from your sin, confess him as Lord, believe in your heart that he rose on the third day, you will be saved. You will be rescued. Rescued from your sin that's leading you to hell. And you'll receive the free gift of eternal life. Others have gone before you and they have missed out because they thought they had more time. Others have gone before you and they missed out because they thought they could earn their way to God. Others have gone before you and they have missed out because they thought they were too sinful that God would never forgive them. Others have missed out because of their pride. 
And the Bible says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Will you humble yourself and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? Will you bow your heads and close your eyes, please? Celebrating Christmas really has no significant meaning if you take Christ out of it. You've got to know Christ Jesus, for he is the reason for Christmas. Right where you're sitting, whether it's at home, whether it's in an automobile, whether it's right here in this room, I ask you right now, place your faith in Jesus. Acknowledge your sin, trust in him, and receive the free gift of God, which is eternal life. The gift is free. The gift is eternal. The gift is now offered to you. Will you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and know him for all eternity? Right where you're sitting right now, you can be saved. You can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. As people are confessing their sin and asking God to save their souls. To you who know the Lord, have you taken for granted what he's done for you? Have you taken for granted how long you get to have this gift that it's for eternity? Have you taken for granted that it's free to you, but it was not free to God? Would you just spend this time in prayer? Would you ask him to forgive you for taking him for granted and taking the gift for granted. And would you ask God to remind you during this Christmas season of the great gift of Jesus and the gift he has brought to all who believe in him, which is the gift of eternal life. Holy Spirit, rend the heavens and come down in power that the mountains might quake at your presence. Stir the lost, convict them of sin, and save them now, O Lord. Stir the saved to appreciate the gift. This is our prayer, and we pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen.